Hey what is going on everyone, I'm Wicked and today I'm going to show you some important changes introduced in the newest stable version of block library. We will tackle up newest additions like context.watch, context.select and context.read, additions which cause context.block and context.repository to become deprecated. This video is going to be an extension of my third tutorial on Flutter block concept since the changes from 6.1.0 are strongly related to some of the concepts we discussed back then. Before we get into the tutorial, make sure you check out the content overview containing the specific timestamps of each topic from today's video. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Ok, so in order to understand the changelog of Flutter block, 6.1.0, we need to see what was wrong with the previous 6.0.0 and lower versions. Remember when I introduced you to the block builder widget concept back in tutorial number 3. Block builder's duty was to rebuild a widget as a response to a state change coming from a block or qubit. Of course, the obvious limitation of this approach lies exactly in the definition of it. More specifically, in the fact that block builder only reacts to a state change emerging from only one single block or qubit. As a consequence of this limitation, some users wanted more granular control and since there is already a multi-block provider and a multi-repository provider that accepts multiple blocks, qubits or repositories to be provided throughout the widget tree, they also wanted some kind of a multi-block builder a tool which can rebuild a widget based on multiple blocks or qubit states. This is where the newest concept named context.watch was introduced. In order to understand exactly what the context.watch function does, I need to translate it in depth. So context.watch of block A function translates into from the widget that was built within the context build context start searching for the unique instance of block A provided above in the widget tree. Then, after it's found, watch or subscribe to its stream of emitted states and whenever a new state is emitted by block A, rebuild the widget from which the lookup was started. This was a surprisingly long translation for the code sequence, right? So currently you might be tempted to say that the translation seems to be familiar to the definition of block builder. Yet, there is still no multiple blocks or qubits mentioned inside it. Then, how can we watch states emitted by multiple blocks or qubits? Simply by calling context.watch on the blocks or qubits you need to watch. For example, if you want to rebuild a specific widget as a result of the states emitted by block A, block B and block C instances, all you need to do is store their states in three different variables like block A state, block B state, block C state and then return a widget you want to be built with the information from those three states. Bear in mind that the return widget is not the only one that will be rebuilt whenever at least one of these three states updates, but rather the entire widget built within the context from which the watch method was called. In our case, the entire builder widget will be rebuilt, therefore our return widget too. I hope this makes sense and if it doesn't, I invite you to watch my in-depth video about build context. In order to see the context.watch function in action, we'll obviously need two blocks or qubits, so that will rebuild a specific widget based on their separate states. So I'll open up the project from my latest tutorial inside VS Code and right away you can observe that Flutter warns us we're using a deprecated version of block. So first and foremost, we'll need to update it to 6.1.0. We'll do that by going to pubspec.yaml and rename the version of the Flutter underscore block dependency from 6.0.0 to 6.1.0. If you have forgotten what our counter app does, every time the phone is connected to Wi-Fi or mobile, the counter value will either increment or decrement by 1. Therefore, currently, our counter app is dependent on the network state. But in order to test if a specific widget will rebuild based on at least one of the two separate states, we need to make the qubits independent again. So, we'll delete the block listener which caused the counter qubit to increment and decrement based on whether the internet qubit was connected to Wi-Fi or mobile. 
Then we'll uncomment the lines of code containing the plus and minus floating buttons that caused the counter qubit to manually increment or decrement. Now both of our qubits are independent. They won't do anything one as a response to the other. In order to demonstrate how context.watch works, we'll have to create a widget which will rebuild whenever at least one of these two qubits emits new states. So let's create a text widget containing the current counter value and the current state of the internet connection. We'll need to wrap this widget with a builder so that we get access to its closest context above it. After all, all we need to do is to write the context.watch.state for each of the two qubits we're interested in, then use them appropriately to return the desired text widget. We can now save, build and run the application, thus observing that whenever I press the minus and plus buttons, the builder widget built within the context from which the watch function was called rebuilds, therefore the text widget rebuilds as well. Then if I switch from mobile to Wi-Fi connection, you can see that the widget rebuilds again leaving the counter unchanged. I hope you understood what the purpose of context.watch is and why it was introduced as an addition of block 6.1.0. Now it's time to move on to the next addition. The next feature was added as a response to those users who wanted a much simpler build when function. So let's say for example you wanted a specific widget to be rebuilt only when the name of an user changes. How would you do that inside block 6.0.0? Well, you would have created a block builder, then you would have set up the build when function so that the widget you want to rebuild will rebuild only when the previous state that user that name is different from current state that user that name. But what if you wanted to do this in a simple manner? Well, this is where context that select function comes into place as a new addition to block 6.1.0. Context that select, similarly to context that watch is still linked to a build context, so it will still rebuild the widget built inside that specific context build context. Remember this select function is useful only when you want to rebuild a widget based on only one simple select condition. For more advanced conditions, the recommended way to do it still remains the builder along with the build when method. Again, to test this, all we have to do is to wrap a text widget inside a builder widget to access its closer build context and then retrieve the new counter value inside the variable while also updating and rebuilding the builder widget. If we save and run the project, you can see that context.select is working as it should. Whenever the current counter value is different from the previous counter value, context.select returns the new value and rebuilds the builder widget. Time to move on to the next added feature. You may have noticed during this tutorial that I have ignored some of the warnings from inside VS Code. This is the most crucial one to understand. Block is deprecated and shouldn't be used. If we click on it, we find out that context.block function got deprecated and that it will be completely removed in version 7.0.0 of block. But why exactly is that happening? Remember from my tutorial number 3 on Flutter block concepts when I explained that you can access the unique provided instance of a block or qubit by either calling block provider that of context or context that block. From the feedback Felix Angelov retrieved from its block users, he realized that people misunderstood the purpose of context that block. Some of the users were using context that block to get the current state of a block or qubit inside the build function of a widget. Then they would use the retrieve state in order to make further decisions on other widgets. This is terribly wrong and should be avoided at all costs because it can cause unpredictable behavior. Why? Well, because there is nothing that guarantees at what moment in time that build function will be called within Flutter engine. Thus, what will the state of the block or qubit be in that situation? Remember, state is a stream of data, so you should be listening to it and do something in response to each value of the stream rather than asking randomly for a value at a random moment in time. But wait, you said context that block will be removed. Then how can we access an instance of a provided block? Well, you can still access it by using block provider that of context or from now on by using the last addition of block 6.1.0, which is 
context.read function. Context.read is, as its name is implying, a way of accessing or reading a block or qubit instance provided in the widget tree. Context.read won't rebuild the widget from the context in which it's called, as opposed to context.watch and context.select functions. At the same time, you need to understand that you should be asking for a block or qubit instance only when you need it and only where you need it. For example, asking for the instance in a build method of a widget will start a lookup every time the widget will rebuild, which is not optimal at all, especially when you only need it to call a function or add an event from inside a button. Keep in mind that we don't know when Flutter will automatically build or rebuild its widgets, except in the cases when we're using block builder, context.watch or context.select cases in which we're manually telling Flutter to rebuild them based on different states from different blocks or qubits. All it's left to be done now is to modify all context.block to context.read right where it's needed. Save, run and, as you can see, the app still works perfectly as it should. This was mainly the tutorial for today. I hope you liked it, if you did you can really support me by pressing the like button, by subscribing to my channel and why not if you have anything to tell me by writing me a comment down below. But until next time, take care, stay safe, Wicked is out, bye bye.